Hey guys, welcome to our first advanced NetBean tutorial. And today we'll be starting a new program called the Temperature Converter. We'll be converting Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. And uh, you may be wondering how we already got to this point. And we didn't make a tutorial on this. If you follow our basic NetBean tutorials, you'll find out a way on how to actually build something similar to this. But I've provided a link in the description where you can download this project and all you have to do is download it, save it to your, your NetBeans projects folder and go to file, open project and then just select the temperature converter and basically NetBeans has a nice feature that tells it whenever there's a NetBeans project a coffee cup will show up on the left hand side and that's how you know that you're dealing with a program that's functional with NetBeans. So open it up and this is where you should get get. Okay, so what we'll be doing is getting started with the menu bar. Now if you don't know what a menu bar is, basically it's this bar on the top that has file, edit, view, navigate, etc. And almost every program has this. As you can see on file we have an exit setting, new project, new file, and we want to have the same thing. But because this is a basic program, we're just going to have a help menu and a file, but we're going to have just an exit in there. When you're dealing with more advanced programs, you can employ the techniques you learned over here into your own work. So uh, let's get started. So for this, we're not going to be using swing controls until a little bit later on. So let's minimize that. Underneath swing controls, we have a menu called swing menus. So let's open that. And we have a few, few selections here. But we're going to go with the first one, and that's called Menu Bar. What we do is drag and drop this onto the top of our program, and you can see it pushed down our image a little bit. And to fix that, all we have to do is drag our size down. When you're trying to be more precise with your GUI sizes, then make sure you take into account the few extra pixels that this menu bar takes up. So let's clean and build and run our projects. And you can see we actually have an error there. I guess that's just from clicking too quickly. But um, we have two new menus here file and edit. If we click on it, nothing actually happens yet because we don't have anything in them. So, firstly, let's change this edit to a help menu. We're going to click on it, and that means it has this nice feature where anything that you select is covered by an orange box. So, keep that in mind as we are working. So let's right click on that, go to edit, edit text, and change this to a help. Okay, so that's been changed. And let's add an exit menu into our file. So click on our file, right click, go down to add from palette, and look for menu item, and click on that. Now, here we go, we have a menu item. Now on the left hand side, we can add an image. Now you can see I clicked on this white box, but... Um, the thing got selected with an orange box just on the right hand side, so just keep that in mind as you're working. That might be a bug, maybe. But let's change this text. So right click on this, change this to exit. Okay, there you go. Now, now we have a shortcut. Obviously, we can use a keyboard shortcut. So let's double click on that, and it opens up this accelerator window. Now we have virtual key. Um, you get manu manually selected. And you can see we have three tick for four tick boxes. Uh, three is for Windows, one is for Mac. And you can select what you want to work with. So if you want to type in Control Alt Q to quit, you can Control Alt and then look for virtual key Q in there. But we like to be lazy. So all we have to do is go into this keystroke and type in whatever you want. Control Q. And there we go. That's it. Okay, so now that that's done, let's add a little image now. In the project, if you downloaded it, I included a small image, exit icon .gif. If you click on that, I just downloaded this picture of Google. And on the bottom left hand side, there's a nice feature, it tells you the dimensions 12 by 12 pixels. It's a really small icon. So uh, maybe in Photoshop or GIMP, you guys can create your own. So uh, let's just double click on that. Image within project, and let's select that. There we go. We now have a nice little icon with a keyboard shortcut. 
as you can see nothing happens because we don't have any code in there we obviously have to add code for certain things to happen so let's do that click on file now make sure that your mouse is over this exit and double click it scroll down and there we go now we are in the source code editor you guys should be familiar with it by now and all we have to do is type in system.exit0 and memorize this because whenever you want to close your program maybe by using a button or anything maybe even enable this is what you would use to close it so now let's run our program file exit and our program is closed we can also type in control Q and we don't actually have to be typing it we can do this anywhere control Q and there we go now you know if your program uh, closed properly by reading this output terminal and it tells us build successful total time 7 seconds if it's in green it's good if it's in red it's bad but you can see it was successful so it worked well now that we have that done let's add something in the help menu um, right click add from palette menu item let's add a how to use section maybe how to Okay, so every help menu. Oh well, let's actually name it help contents. Help contents. Okay, there we go. So um, I suggest looking at other people's programs and seeing how they do all this menu bar work, and uh, try copying it or try doing something similar. Get some ideas. So you can see by this one we have help contents, we have all these online documentation and support. I guess you can add that now. Keyboard shortcuts card, yes you can do that. Start page and about, yes. So um, you can see this stuff is separated by using separators. You can see that nice little indented line. And in Epid we can also do that. So let's go right click uh, help text over here. Add from palette, go down to separator, and there we go, we have a small separator right there. Now let's add another menu item, rename this to about. Now this can be about the program or about the developers. Let's add another one, maybe let's make this one about the developers, who the developers are. You should always give credit to developers. And one more, let's name this version info. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look and see how that is. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. Now that we have uh, a few settings here, in order to make this tutorial as short as possible, I'm just going to work with one. And for now, I'm just going to work with just the developers page. Uh, maybe you guys can go ahead and continue on in your own time. So I'm, I'm just going to add a shortcut for the developers. Control Alt D seems to be good. Remember always keep um, shortcuts similar to other programs. You don't want to have a arbitrary shortcut, you know, like Control Alt Shift D F T. You know, that's a bit that's a bit crazy. You just want to keep it simple and as common as possible. So okay, let's work with the developers. Now, when the user starts the program and he wants to see who the developers are, when he clicks on this, he wants to open up a new page that tells us what, who the developers are, or tells us the help contents, whatever it may be. So in order to do that, we need to actually create a new JFrame. So let's go to our app package, right click, go to new, and then JFrame form. And let's name this developers GUI. Always put GUI at the end of JFrame so that you know what you're working with. Click on finish and we have this new window. Now I'm just quickly going to run through the stuff that I do all the time. Okay, now that I'm done, um, I basically just did the, the basic layout that I always do. If you follow my first tutorial, you'll find out what exactly that is. Okay, so now that we've done, we want to link up this GUI with this GUI. Now, just keep in mind the name of this GUI. We named it Developers GUI. So let's go into our 
our main one go down to help and double click on the developers part to get into our source code here we are again okay now we are just type in new then the name of the GUI that we want to open which is developers GUI and we want to have an immediate open close brackets dot set visible true okay there we go now this is basically setting our developers GUI to true and in this case true is yes so set visible yes and that's it that's how you link up a GUI so we go on to help developers okay and there we go now that's a common error you know we'll fix that now so let's add a text area where you can actually type who the developers are so open up our swing controls go down to text area now this is meant to type in paragraphs you know long sentences things like that um, when you're working with a login page or a user creation page you want to use text fields not normally because that's just meant for single line one word type of things so there we go let's control alt d let's make use of a shortcut and here we go now you can see we can type in here we don't want to be able to type obviously and we have the scroll bar which is very handy um, when you get to the end of this whole thing you'll see another scroll bar going vertically but currently that's not possible because it's not word wrapping and it's just, this is just going to go on forever or until your computer crashes so okay as you can see right there I closed I closed the developer page and it closed both of our windows it closed our entire program but we don't want that to happen when we click this red cross we only want this to close if you want both the programs to close then you can leave it as it is but I don't like it like that so let's click on our frame right click go on to properties and in our first tutorial just hang on a second guys and in our first tutorial I said um, this exit and close thing becomes very handy when we use dispose so you want to change default close operation to dispose and if you run this now, dispose will only get rid of the window that's open. So there we go. It only closes just this one. Okay, so this text area has properties as long um, as well as everything else in our swing controls. So right click on this, go down to properties, and you can see we can change change the color, the background text size but we are not interested in that we are interested in making it non-editable by the user so we are going to change the first property from editable to non-editable we are just going to change this tick to no tick we also have line wrap and basically when you get to the end of the line you want it to go onto the next line you don't want it to carry on going horizontally forever so yes and one more is wrap style word now basically if you have a long word like developers and you put it right at the end of the, the line usually it puts a dash and then continues the word from the next line if you read a book um, which you probably have you'll notice that sometimes in some of the books it actually does that but we don't want that to happen so let's tick that okay and there we go now no one can edit up our text in here not even us when in this mode but we can edit the text in here. All you have to do is double click and you can add add whatever text you want in here. Now remember you can also do this in, in, um, in Photoshop and create an entire thing. Now I'm actually typing in the true thing. My name is Ayur and the person who does our well the GUIs and the images for us is the deal. He's basically the guy who did tutorial number three. If you watch his videos and his speed arts as well, it's all done by him. And that's us. And you can obviously add random stuff here, maybe like uh, 
project manager and put there John and Greg Gregory. Okay, so let's run this program. Go to developers, and there we go. We have our text right here. And uh, obviously, you can develop this with a background, and maybe expand this to make this bigger. Bring this down, and then put a nice heading on the top. You know, maybe make it a little bit smaller, maybe about like that, and then on the top put a nice heading in Photoshop or GIMP, Paint, and uh, I'm obviously not a professional Photoshop artist, so I can't actually do stuff like that, but you can basically write down developers in a nice fancy text. You can change the color of the background of this as well. Properties as always, change the background to a black and then change the foreground to white and this is usually what I do a black and white or, or a grayish color and then have a gray background so it matches but uh, that's basically how you get started with menu bars and also linking up GUIs uh, which is a very important aspect of NetBeans and programs in general and before I go I just want to show you guys one more thing uh, and I never show you guys how to add more menus. All we have to do, this is really simple, right click on your menu bar, go down to add menu, and then there we go. Edit text, everything else is the same. You can experiment with different things, radio button, checkbox, and there we go, window, there we go. That's It's really basic, everything works perfectly, and uh, Please subscribe, leave us a comment on what you want to see next. Um, I'm still not sure what I want to show you guys. Maybe we'll get started with the coding for this. Uh, go through a little bit of Java for those who want to learn just a tad along with the GUI creation. Uh, you know, learn two in one. But uh, yeah, please subscribe, like, comment. You know, you can send us a message if you guys need any specialized backgrounds for a program. You know, I'm sure my friend won't mind helping you at all. My name is Daniil. Daniil, sorry, I'm a little bit sick, so my voice is a bit, sounds a bit grumpy, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy the tutorial, and uh, stay tuned, subscribe, because there are lots more to come. So, once again, thanks for watching.